Okay, hello. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, apologies for the delay in getting going. Uh, but uh, as you can see, the crew here are working very hard to uh, make this an enjoyable session. So now it's my job to uh, live up to that expectation. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming here. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you all. My name is Mark Gaylor. Uh, I am from Microsoft. Uh, and uh, even though obviously Microsoft is a US company, I'm actually from Vancouver, Canada. I come from uh, Vancouver, a beautiful city. Uh, if you get a chance to go there, please do. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is Microsoft, uh, Microsoft interoperability, our approach to openness, and in particular, our approach to open source. So I'm hoping that what I'm going to uh, convey to you today is give you a, a very broad picture of what Microsoft is doing with open source today, and hopefully give you some ideas of how we can help you guys uh, implement some of these solutions, develop your own innovative solutions, and uh, enjoy some of the technology that we have and that we can make uh, available to you. Uh, so before I get going, I also want to give a big shout out to uh, the guys that were here last night. I understand there were like 3,000 Windows 8 apps that were developed uh, last night. So there was clearly some hard work going on, some hardcore hacking going on. And uh, uh, that's a really amazing result. So thanks to all of you who uh, contributed to that effort developing uh, 3,000 Windows 8 apps. That's pretty cool. Okay. What I'm going to cover is I'm going to talk a little bit about Microsoft and interoperability generally. Some of the stuff I'm going to talk about you may be familiar with, some maybe not. I'm also going to uh, talk about the work that we're doing with open source projects and highlight some key projects for you. Uh, time permitting, obviously we're running a little bit short of time, but I'm also hopefully, rather than just give you the big slideware presentation, I'm hoping I'm going to have time to demonstrate some stuff for you as well. So the real underlying theme of my presentation today is that Microsoft as a technology company has changed and we are becoming more open. Uh, you will find that in our technologies, as we develop them, we are building in more and more openness. Uh, we are connecting with more and more uh, non-Microsoft technologies, and we're trying to make this as uh, productive and as uh, interoperable an experience for you guys as we possibly can. <clears throat> and there's some basic tenets that we have that underpin our approach to openness. So we're now playing well with others, we play well with others. We listen to customers, we listen to partners, we listen to developers, we listen to IT pros. So a lot of what you're going to see here has been driven by folks just like you, telling us what they want to see in our products, uh, helping us understand how better to inter uh, integrate our products with other technologies. And as we all move to a world of devices and services, we are open in the cloud, and we are going to become more open in the cloud as we develop our technologies and our offerings further. And in particular, what underpins our approach to openness is a very uh, deep investment in standards, in industry standards and open standards. Uh, embracing open source technology, we're going to talk a, a fair amount about that through this presentation and ensuring that open source works well on our platforms. And by platforms, I mean across our platforms. So it might be Skype, it might be, uh, it might be Windows Server, it might be Windows 8, it might be Office. We're going to continue to develop the ability for open source to work well with our technology stack. <clears throat> in terms of standards, everything that we do in this area is underpinned by an investment and a commitment to standards. We are uh, an active member of 150 standards bodies worldwide and uh, 400 uh, working groups uh, worldwide. And this number increases all the time. And what's important to understand is we are working with industry partners on these bodies and these working groups. And in many cases, we are Microsoft people are chairing uh, the working group itself. So I come from a part of Microsoft called Microsoft Open Technologies. And one of the things I'm going to show you today is what Microsoft Open Technologies really does and how you can benefit from that. And some of the folks that are on these working groups and chairing these working groups are part of the uh, Microsoft Open Technologies organization. 
So the HTML5 working group, for example, happens to be chaired by a colleague of mine who is, his office is down the road from mine and he works for Microsoft Open Technologies. <coughs> so when we talk about standards and interoperability then, what do we really mean? What, what, what does that kind of translate? How does that translate for you guys? So uh, if we look at our office product, for example, uh, there are tons of standards and interoperability built into our Office product. Uh, up here it says uh, Office 2010. For those of you who were downtown yesterday in uh, downtown Sao Paulo, we launched Office 2013. So I should actually scribble this out and put Office 2013. It was launched in Brazil yesterday. We had a great show. If you get a chance to go and see the, uh, the booth at the mall, I think it's there until Monday, I believe it is. Uh, so w within Office, um, we now provide support for OpenXML, ODF, and PDF. In Office 2013, even though it's here it says we support ODF 1.1, in Office 2013, we actually support ODF 1.2. And that means we can open, edit, and save with, o with ODF, with open document format. It also means that if you want to set the default save for Office to ODF, we can do that. You, you, got, you guys can do that as end users. <clears throat> this means with Office 2013, we can open, edit, and save for open document format and PDF particularly as a, another uh, addition to the Office 2013 capabilities. So you're trying to edit those PDF documents, you can do that in Office 2013. And this is enabled by our commitments to standards and our work on interoperability to ensure that Microsoft products work with a variety of standards and a variety of document formats. <clears throat> <clears throat> also, we are committed to ensuring that our uh, uh, Office product works across a range of services and devices. And this is something that you'll see more and more of uh, as we evolve our technology set. Uh, so this was actually taken yesterday. I took this photo yesterday uh, at the Office 2013 launch. <clears throat> and what you're looking at here, uh, this is a, a PC. It's made out of paper. It's made out of cardboard. This PC is running an Atom processor. It's uh, got about a one gigabyte of RAM in it, and it's running Ubuntu 12.10. What's very cool about that, uh, there you go, you can see Ubuntu running here. And this is a Firefox browser session. And what we have running in here is a Word document running on Office 365. So one of the things that you're going to see from Microsoft is that we are committed to a world of open devices and services we want to make sure that our products run well on non-Microsoft technology stacks, um, maybe a, you know, a, a non-Microsoft browser, non-Microsoft devices. And we're going to continue to develop in this area. So this was demonstrated yesterday uh, uh, at the Microsoft booth in Sao Paulo. And again, if you get a chance to go down and see it, take a ch uh, check out this thin eco PC made out of paper. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> so, another example that uh, I want to mention is SkyDrive. SkyDrive is our uh, uh, a cloud service for hosting documents, images, etc. And you'll see here that we're committed to ensuring that SkyDrive runs well, bringing your data to any app, on any device, on any platform. So we provide support for Firefox. We provide support for iOS and Android. And we're going to continue to do this. And again, this is based on our commitment and our investment to standards, to industry-wide standards. Windows Server, <coughs> we did a big uh, Windows Server launch this year for, you, for, those, for those of you who may not be familiar. And Windows Server underpins our ability to support the cloud and to enable you guys as developers and IT pros to easily shift your applications and services from server-based on-premise equipment up into the cloud and back again. The choice is yours. And our Windows Server uh, operating system works seamlessly with our Windows Azure cloud operating system. And again, this is something that you're going to see more and more from Microsoft is this interoperability across our platform set. <clears throat> OK, so let's dive in and talk a bit about open source then, Microsoft and open source. Some people often tell me that I have the most difficult job in the world because I'm here at this audience talking to you about Microsoft and open source. And people say, that's a really odd thing to do. <laughs> so I'm very pleased to be able to do this. And actually, I have a lot to tell you 
And so I'm going to kind of skip through some of this stuff because there really is actually too much that I could tell you about what we're doing with open source in one hour. But needless to say, Microsoft is working with open source every single day of the week in practically every country and region around the world. Uh, we have uh, developer specialists, we have technology specialists, we have uh, open source community specialists. So these are folks that will reach out to those of you who are working with open source, work with you to help you build apps, make sure you have a great experience building open source apps on the Microsoft platform across our range of technologies, and also making sure that open source runs well across our platform. Uh, Microsoft is actually a contributing uh, a plat platinum member of the Apache Software Foundation. Many people are not aware of this. This is just one example of our commitment to open source uh, and the uh, evolution of open source technology. Interestingly enough, for those of you who know, may know Gianugo Rabellino from the Apache Foundation and Ross Gardler from the Apache Foundation, both of those gentlemen are colleagues of mine. They work for Microsoft Open Technologies. In fact, Ross Gardler from the UK, from Apache, just joined us last week. So we're very pleased to have him on board. This is great news for us and I think great news for the open source community. So as I mentioned earlier on, I am part of an organization within Microsoft called Microsoft Open Technologies Inc. We are a wholly owned subsidiary of Microsoft and what we do is we're an engineering team, we do the deep integration projects between Microsoft technology and open source technology. So a lot of what you see out there when we talk about Microsoft working well with open source has been developed by Microsoft Open Technologies. Now I want to qualify this, this does not mean that this is, we are the only organization that does open source in Microsoft. Actually, there are thousands of engineers working with Microsoft, uh, <coughs> working for Microsoft, working with open source on a daily basis. The reason that we have MS Open Technologies is it enables us to do very targeted, very focused projects in a very expedited way. This is good news for us. It's also good news for you guys because it means that we can build open source integration projects very quickly uh, and with very uh, close cooperation with the open source community. So as we walk through, I'm going to give you some examples of some of the stuff that we've worked on. Uh, if you go to our blog, this is interoperability at Microsoft. This really gives you a snapshot of, uh, of the kind of work that MS Open Tech does. So here we have using Drupal on uh, Windows Azure with something called OData. So this is where we're taking our cloud platform and we're, making, uh, we're creating an opportunity for Drupal as a CMS, an open source CMS, to work well on our cloud, but also we're combining it with the OData protocol. The OData protocol is an open data protocol. This allows us to get data, open data, easily in and out of technologies like Drupal, our cloud, um, uh, Ruby, Python, etc., uh, etc., et whatever dev, dev tool you may be using. Time permitting, I'm hopefully going to give you a demonstration of this a little later on. <laughs> what else do we have here? Uh, we have guidance how to develop for Windows Phone 8 on your Mac, um, how to run the emulator, how to set that up, how to use the development tools, etc., etc. So I'd encourage you to keep an eye on the Open Technologies blog. Uh, we're blogging like uh, every other day with new ideas, new guidance, new help for how you guys can build new innovative apps using open source on the Microsoft platform. <coughs> so <coughs> one of the areas that Microsoft have invested tremendously in uh, recently is uh, Linux, working well with Linux in particular. And rather than me kind of go through and tell you what we've been doing, uh, I thought I would show you some community comments, commentary on what we've been doing in this area. So at last year's Linux Foundation, Jim Zemlin, uh, who chairs the Linux Foundation, in his keynote address in San Diego, actually called out Microsoft for the work that we've been doing with Linux. And he called us out for three reasons. Number one, because Linux now runs natively on Windows Azure as a virtual machine. Hopefully I'll get time to show you that quickly. Uh, we have native support for uh, CentOS, Ubuntu, SUSE Linux and others. Secondly, he called out the work that we've done with Node.js. And thirdly, he called out the work that we've done particularly with the Linux kernel. <clears throat> so, 
uh, there was a, a report that was released back end of last year. Some of you guys might have seen it. Microsoft is now in the top 20 contributors to Linux overall. And with the Linux 3 kernel, we had the top single individual engineering contribution from KY Srinivasan. And we were the fifth largest corporate contributor. So we're working very closely with Linux. We're working very closely with the Linux kernel. And we want to make sure that Linux running on our stack is a very uh, uh, outstanding experience for all of you guys here in the audience. The work that we did was even called out by Mark Shuttleworth of Canonical, particularly the integration work we did with Ubuntu and 